Our second reading comes from Matthew, chapter 2, verses 13 to 23. Hear the word of the Lord. Now, after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take this child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing in loud lamentation, Rachel weeping, for her children. She refused to be consoled because they are no more. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Go, get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who are seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. <coughs> Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be holy and pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock, my redeemer. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's hard to believe that this morning is the last Sunday of the year. And not just of the year, but of this decade. Fittingly, my social media has been filled with looking back at your year. One specific recap caught my attention from the New York Times where they had the decade recap and pictures. They show the great things that have happened and the tragedies that have occurred. There were these pictures of the earthquake in Haiti in 2010, Hurricane Sandy in the school shootings at Sunny Hook Elementary in 2012, pictures of migrants traveling on the train called the Beast, to the USA in 2014, <coughs> migrants arriving crammed in boats in Greece in 2015, the protests of the Dakota Pipeline in 2016, in 2018, a shooting in Florida, and pictures of migrants being separated, children from parents. There are also pictures of joyous moments of the decade. In 2013, President Barack Obama greeting Yolande Rene King after a ceremony commemorating the 50th anniversary of Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech. In 2014, a picture of when the New York Giants pulled off a one-handed catch to score a touchdown against the Dallas Cowboys. And an amazing picture of Usain Bolt in 2016 cruising to victory at the Olympics. I particularly liked the New York Times decade recap 
because it differed than all my other recaps I've been getting in my social media. All my social media ones highlight my most liked photos, my most liked video of the year, which was one of my videos for my first sermon here. <laughs> it showed only positive highlights. When I was scrolling through the New York Times recap, it jarred me. It didn't shy away from showing the many tragedies our communities had to endure in the last decade. It highlighted some of those joys, yet it also highlighted the many negative highlights that weighed heavy on our hearts. This morning, I believe our passages call us to be awakened, to be redirected, to hear the recaps of the gospel narrative, knowing full well the words from our lips singing, the Lord has come, Emmanuel, becomes the Lord has come to die and to rise again. Indeed, our first text we heard this morning is full of praise. We hear the words, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is on earth and in heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people, praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him, praise the Lord. It's what we did. We praised just a few days ago, not just the fact that a baby was born, but that this baby born was Emmanuel, God with us, and that this child would grow up and be the Christ, the one who redeems and reconciles. We rejoiced, we sung praises, we celebrated the goodness of our God and all the activity of our God who is working in our world. The baby we happily adored, as our pastor, Reverend Dr. Joyce Shin said, the baby adored, the baby born not in a palace, but in a humble manger, not even an important data point to the empire, but the one we know to be the Christ whose identification with us leads to the cross and the resurrection. We rejoiced as we heard a story being recapped, the beautiful scene of the Magi surrounding the baby, offering their gifts, of the cosmos pointing to Jesus being born. The star had led us, arriving to the stable, and there is Mary and Joseph holding the baby, the newborn king. And as the recap of the gospel continues, we are jarred awake. For the world that our Messiah is born in is one where Christ is met and greeted by the powers of the earth. As the recap unfolds, we see the powers of the world cannot and will not want to meet this newborn king. To think Jesus will be welcome is an expectation that is disappointed. So Joseph receives a dream. Go, flee. Herod has been betrayed by the Magi, even though he told them he wanted to go and pay homage to the newborn king. He is frightened by this king, this one who threatens the legitimacy of his throne. Christ is not met with the powers to be with gifts, except for the gift of chaos and violence. The praises from our lips, the joyous songs of joy to the world, swiftly become, Lord, protect, Lord, nurture, Lord, hide us. So Mary and Joseph gather their things. They pack up as soon as Joseph awakes. They take their crying child, and they begin the difficult journey to safety. Their home, where the joyous songs of praise of the birth of their child were sung, and they run. They run for safety, and they find refuge. They find sanctuary of all places in Egypt. From the manger in Bethlehem to the larger world of pain and uncertainty, 
our Messiah and the Holy Family flee into the larger world that our newborn King is Lord of all, yet must first claim through pain and suffering. This recap of the good news sounds familiar, no? In the midst of praising God for Emmanuel, God with us, the Holy Family has to flee from violence. It's true that in the midst of singing away in the manger and joy to the world this past Tuesday, we hold this story of good news and tension with the pain and uncertainty that happens in our world. And hearing the good news, we also hear the bad news of others who had fled from violence and they are separated from their parents. Some in cages, some who die in the custody of the place they hope to find refuge. Some who even die on the way here where four brown bodies die every five days. And hearing the good news of the birth of our Christ, where we enter the household of God, yet many people do not find a home today. And hearing the good news of the birth of Christ, we also hear the bad news today of a severely divided church. And hearing the good news that the holy family that flees, that find breath, finds refuge in Egypt, we then begin to hear the cries. The cries of all the mothers, the fathers, the loved ones who cry for the death of their babies. The ground of Bethlehem crying out. And hearing the good news, we hear how our praises are met with violence. <coughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? To proclaim the good news is to say that the good news arrives in the world defined by suffering. And as this recap continues, as we hold in tension the good news we have heard with the bad news that meets it, the recap assures us that God is protecting this Christ child, that the Messiah has escaped, and eventually all will be comforted, for our Messiah will one day reign where violence is no more, where all are comforted. And then Joseph receives another dream. Herod has died. Our recap offers some good news. Yet on the way back home, on the way back to Bethlehem, where Christ was born, the place where they may know the people, the food, the local chatter, a place they called home that they long to return to, is being ruled by Archelaus, and Joseph fears to return. His fears are confirmed by another dream, and instead of going home, they go to Nazareth in Galilee. As Jesus says later in Matthew, foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Indeed, the Holy Family continues to be a refugee family. To proclaim the good news, again, is to say the good news arrives in the world defined by suffering. Now, recap of the story of Christ's birth, of good news being met with bad news, mirrors the real recaps we hear today at the eve of a new decade. A decade behind us that is filled with bad news and good news, of a warming and deteriorating world we have on one side, and then of a generation of young people who fight for the good. A world where violence rages on, and the world that we await, where swords become plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. A world where even though good news arrived, it is marred still by suffering. And I wonder, as we recap, there are many things I wish I could change. I wish the dreams that Joseph was having were dreams I could change. 
Maybe instead of Joseph receiving the dream of needing to flee, to find refuge from violence, that he could have had a dream that the refugee family, this fleeing family, would find a place of welcome and security. I wish that this past Tuesday, as we sang Silent Night, Holy Night, with our candles, that the world that Christ child was being born into was one where the Holy Family would never need to be a refugee family, a fleeing family, a world where the good news arrives in a world that does not suffer. I truly believe that as we continue to see the recaps of the gospel narrative, as we continue to think of the recaps of our decade, that we could dare to dream to be the gospel bearers. That the good news arriving in the world means that the world will not forever suffer. A people who bring kingdom come to kingdom today. That as we dare to dream, we bring about this dream. Where the good news stares down the violence. The good news says this world marked by suffering will be redeemed. We dare to dream that in the same way the Holy Family was kept secure, that the families at the borders may find security. That even when the Herods of our world, when the powers to be, want to meet the good news with violence, that we be the gospel bearers to say no more, that reconciliation is at hand. To be a people who proclaim and go and share the good news, to be a people who love one another, and by doing so, point to the good news. To proclaim it at the tops of the mountains and at the lows of the valleys, that we fill our world with the good news that Christ is born and that this impacts our world. The Christ who had entered a world of pain and escaped from violence is the one who will eventually be the one who takes the pain of the world on the cross. The one who defeats death in the resurrection and in the resurrection proclaims death has no sting. The world is being reconciled today. Our Lord has come, the Christ is born to make all things new, to be the one who's born once again come to die and rise again. And that with the power of the Holy Spirit, we live into the good work of Jesus. The one whom in the midst of all the bad news of the world, that we dare to dream. That the world will become the place where violence ceases to exist. Where the bad recaps of our decades cease to exist where the household of God means all are welcomed, where no family needs to flee no more, that through the holy and wonderful name of Jesus Christ, all things are being made new. I dream that we continue to be a people who dream, to bring the kingdom come to kingdom today, that the good news that arrives is good news that heals, for we, the church, have been entrusted with the message of reconciliation in and through Jesus Christ. This is why we can say, as the psalm said, let us praise the name of the Lord, for God's name alone is exalted. God's glory is above the earth and heaven. God has raised up a horn for God's people, praise for all God's faithful. For the people who are close to God, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord.